before I start this video, I want to ask you to support me by subscribing to my channel. And please like this video if you find it helpful. And of course, if you have some questions or suggestions, welcome to the comments. And we jump right in. Hi everyone! In this video, we will walk through how to set up refresh tokens for a Symfony application. First, let's delve in theory. Refresh tokens are used in authentication systems to allow users to stay logged in without having to re-enter their credential repeatedly. Here is a breakdown of how the refresh token system works. First, initial authentication and access token issues. When a user first logs in, they provide their credentials like a username and password. The server verifies this credential and if they are correct, it generates two tokens. First, access token. And second, refresh token. Access token, a short-lived token, typically expires in minutes or hours that the client will use to access protected resources. And refresh token is a long-lived token, usually valid for days or weeks, that the client will use to obtain a new access token when the current one expires. Second, using the access token. The client, uh, usually the front-end application, stores the access token and includes it in the headers of each request to access protected resources. The server checks the validity of the access token with each request. If it's valid, the request is processed. If the access token has expired, the request is denied and the client will need a new access token to continue. Third, access token expiration and refresh process. When the access token expires, the client sends the refresh token to the server, typically in a special refresh endpoint. The server validates the refresh token. If valid, the server issues a new access token and optionally a new refresh token. If invalid, it's expired or revoked, uh, then the client is prompt to log in again. Token rotation and security. Some systems rotate the token each time a new access token is issued. This means a new refresh token is generated with each refresh and the old one is invalidated. This prevents reuse of old refresh tokens if they are ever exposed. Revoking tokens. The server can revoke refresh token if necessary. For example, if a user logs out or if there is suspicious activity. Once a refresh token is revoked, it can no longer be used to obtain your access tokens, effectively logging the user out. And we move on. To get GWT refresh token functionality, first we need to install appropriate bundle. But to use this bundle, you need to install either the Doctrine ORM or MongoDB, as they don't come bundled automatically. Skipping this step may cause errors during installation. And now let's install GWT refresh token bundle with following command. Now let's check correctness of this bundle registration. So we need config uh, bundles.php file. Here our bundle. Yeah, everything okay. And also configuration file for this bundle should be appeared. Let's also check it. Here it. Uh, and as you can see, after bundle installing, should, in SRC folder, uh, entity folder should be appeared with refresh token entity. 
let's check it yes uh, but we need to move this entity on the domain layer cause all entities stored in my project on the domain layer Now we need to define the refresh token road. And now we need to add a firewall configuration section for a fresh GWT in the security configuration file. And now let's update the database schema using migrations. Let's also set the GWT token lifetime to 60 seconds for testing purposes and let's also specify the refresh token lifetime. This is a week in seconds. We can also update detail on a refresh token when it used. By default this feature is disabled. And now through Postman let's get new GWT token with the help of refresh token. And also I forgot to add this road in security configuration file in access list, so let's do it.
as you can see, we get error unauthorized because uh, our GWT token expired. So let's get new token with the help of refresh token. Okay, we get this error because uh, this user already exists. Uh, let's try to do it one more time and previously delete this user from database. Okay, as you can see, everything works as expected. And for today it's all. I hope you enjoy this video and see you next time.